Whenever you're ready. Okay. It is time for the Hold the Rope Show, presented by Jerry Lane Chevrolet, Find New Roads, and Sammy's Grill on Highland, starring Skip Bertman and Dan Canaveri. The latest on the business of sports, LSU sports, LSU baseball, and national sports topics. Here now is the host of the Hold the Rope Show, Tommy Chrysan. Hello and welcome to Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. I am Tommy Christ and we're excited to be bringing you another show. Have some fun, tell some stories, and we got a whale of a show coming up for you tonight. We'll have among our guests Doug Thompson. Hey, you know, he's College World Series champion. He threw that glove up in the air. I still don't think it has come down yet. Uh, I've never seen the video of that glove returning to the planet Earth. But Doug will be here, and he'll visit with Coach and have some good stories and some motivational stuff as well as some stories. And then also tonight, Justin Vincent. He was in the Superdome the other night. He's a former Tiger. He played with the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's a BCS national champion. He's going to give you his thoughts and observations on the Florida State game and – the upcoming game with the Southern Jaguars, who will make the 11-mile trip across town this Saturday <laughs> to play in Tiger Stadium. That's going to be a big night for a lot of reasons. We'll get into some of that as well. Coach Bertman, how are you this evening? I'm doing great, TK. Uh, you're right. Tonight's a good show, and I'm very excited to see Doug and, of course, uh, number 25, the <laughs> national champion and, of course, professional player who works at the Tiger Athletic Foundation now. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun. Dan Canterbury, how are you tonight? Doing great, Tommy. No rain tonight. You know, we got a, a football game under our belt. Got a home game coming up. Busy week where I work at TAF with JV. Busy week. Busy week with the Tiger Athletic Foundation. is important. To very, it's very important to LSU, and it's good that you guys have a busy week because it's a home game. And how many phone calls emails, text messages come flying in with the guy that didn't get his tickets or he thought he was in row eight. Now he's in row 10. Whoa, I mean, the way tell you the big one we got is we got people wondering why their seats were where they're at or how they get the tickets from the Superdome, but we don't handle the tickets. One of the things people think is because we're in Louisiana, we control all the tickets. And so that's the issue. And that kind of slowed down getting tickets out, answering all those questions, getting tickets out for the home game coming up. So we're on, we're on, we're online now. Everything's good. We're ready to roll. It's a very busy time for the athletic foundation for the athletic department. We'll talk a little bit, a little bit about that in the business of sports segment uh, with getting ready for a home game. There's, there's a little more than meets the eye to prepare to welcome 80, 90,000 people to the stadium and more than that to the campus. I mean, there's going to be lots of people. Skip, uh, you can appreciate this to go to work this morning and the, Roads blocked off. We got cranes. We got power washers. We got people fixing. Everything's getting fixed like today. You know, everything's <laughs> yeah. going on. That's the great thing. If you had a job to do in Baton Rouge and traffic, it had to be finished by today. <laughs> uh, you know, because of the crowd that will be using. So that's another good thing about LSU football. <laughs> So once again, this is Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano, brought to you by Jerry Lane Chevrolet, Find New Roads, and of course, Sammy's Grill on Highland. We're going to take a break, and we're going to come back with the business of sports, brought to you by Blumberg and Associates. That's all up next. You are watching Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. For the perfect car, but every place he looked, he was ignored. Excuse me. Looking to buy a car? until one dealership decided to give him a chance. From Jerry Lane Chevrolet comes a story of one man's journey of buying a vehicle and getting treated with honesty and transparency every step of the way. Thank you for listening to me. Helping customers one car at a time. You can count on Jerry Lane. Customer service. A burger so big it's got its own gravitational pull to keep you coming back. Oh, and tasting freaking awesome could have something to do with it, too. Sammy's better than ever.
Do the words investing, 401k, mutual funds, IRA, and annuities have you worried or confused? The team at Altus Wealth of Mickey Gidry, Ronnie Brown, Jesse Daigle, Brad Ewing, Wally McMakin, Jeremy Perkey, John Reeder, John Stewart, Clay Moffat, and Dixon McMakin are ready to help with all your financial and estate planning needs. Find them at www.altuswealthmgt.com or call 201-9300. That's 201-9300. I want to tell you about Fat Tuesday's Casino, located in the Plaquemine Truck Stop on Highway 1 in Plaquemine. Everybody has a good time. Come on out to Fat Tuesday's Casino, where every day is a carnival. That's on Highway 1 in Plaquemine, Fat Tuesday's Casino. Again, it's where every day is a carnival, Fat Tuesday's Casino in the Plaquemine Truck Stop. Since opening our first Benny's Car Wash location in 1951, we continue to employ the latest in automated car wash technology, from the use of electronic sensor technology to the chemistry and engineering of cleaning agents. Over the years, our car care services have expanded to include detailing, oil changes, state inspections, along with Be Quick convenience stores and fueling stations. After seven decades of successful operations, we are proud to have nine locations serving the Baton Rouge area. For more information, go to Benny'sCarWash.com. Welcome back to Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Hey, this is what you got to do. You got to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Hold the Rope, Skip and Cano. It's very important that you subscribe. You can watch the show live on Tuesday nights at 6 o'clock, but then it's there if you want to watch it Wednesday evening or Thursday at lunchtime. It'll always be there. You subscribe to the YouTube channel, Hold the Rope, Skip and Cano. Once you get it locked in, you're good to go. Also, Hold the Rope show is available on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as well. But it's very important. This is your homework assignment tonight. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and tell two other people to subscribe. All right. All right, uh, right now, this segment is brought to you by Roosters Grooming, and it is time for the business of sports. The business of sports is brought to you by Blumberg and Associates, and Coach Bertman has to put his AD tie on. As you see, uh, Coach all decked out here at the box with the AD tie on. That's the old box, I believe. Yes, it and, is. And uh, Blumberg and Associates, happy to bring you this business of sports segment. Coach, we're going to start off with there's a home football game. Five nights from tonight, Saturday night, 6.30 kick on the SEC Network. The Southern Jaguars making the 11-mile bus ride across town. Talk about from the business of sports, the athletic department, getting ready for a game uh, with the well, game ops and everything else that's involved. Thanks, uh, T. First, I'd like to say uh, that playing an in-state team, you're going to get many more people in your ballpark than if you play, you know, somebody from uh, – the middle of the country, um, like New Mexico, well, it can't bring too many people. Uh, but Southern, of course, bring a lot of people. It's going to be a wonderful game. They're working on, believe me, they're working yesterday, today. They would even cut the holidays short. And that's because, ready, there's about 1,200 people involved in working that game and even more when you include police, okay? You need about 125 security people to work the game. Some are, are not, some are plain clothes, so to speak, and dressed in a, you know, an LSU shirt or even a Southern shirt or whatever, looking for things. Do you know that there's likely to be 125,000 people at some time between two hours before the game and of course two hours after the game begins. You can only get 100,000 in the ballpark, 101,000 total. So where are the other people doing? And the answer is they come for the tailgating. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people who are caught and they drink too much. Uh, they're looking for everything from a pickpocket to a ticker, ticket scalper. Um, so security is a big thing. You need the concessionaires. It's the first time they're selling Cokes and dealing hot dogs. Uh, wow. Of course, um, who are our people, Dan, who are security now? 
we've got uh, Landmark does the security, the game ushers and all those people, uh, you know, that, that take the tickets and make sure people get in. But Coach, don't you get off-duty policemen to work as uh, security, am I right? And How many? Constables, off, off-duty, off-duty uh, Baton Rouge uh, Sheriff's Department or Baton Rouge Police or others. Constable. That are off-duty, uh, making good money per hour. And they just kind of sit and wait once the game begins. They kind of go somewhere, and then they're back 30 minutes before the game ends so that they can direct traffic, which, of course, is a nightmare, and it's nobody's fault. Believe me, people have been working for weeks and months and years. Engineers, huh? get it, it's impossible. There's just not enough roads to get out. That's why coming in is a little different because they all come in at different times. Um, on a new game like uh, Southern, uh, uh, Scott Woodward has his all of his people, meaning everybody in sports information. Uh, game every, management's there. Everybody in maintenance in or equipment. Facility work. services is on call the whole time. All facility services people, of course, are... Super dear. People with uh, Doppler radar, you know, machines are there. There's nothing that's left out in the home game. Um, and it's very tough. But, but, but LSU will profit from the home game. You know, although Southern gets their money for coming down, turn around, and go back. And they'll be able to keep most of the money. The money stays in state. I think it's a great deal. You know, I hope, uh, you know, the game is enjoyable and good for everybody. Uh, no, I don't think LSU is going to do an 86-0 game <laughs> like Southern had last week over Florida Memorial. Uh, I mean, if you're going to play a team that can win by 13 or 14 touchdowns, maybe you shouldn't schedule those guys, you know. But, uh, no, that's not happening. Southern has a real good team. Eric Dooley does a great job. And uh, they'll be ready to play. Tiki, one of the things I wanted to say is, you know, Skip, you talked about all the people involved. you got game management people. you got sports information. Lots of athletic trainers, team doctors, everybody there. Probably, as you say in the, uh, in the uh, meetings at times, the most important people in the building, Janie <laughs> King. You know, they're cleaning the bathrooms, keeping people. Who's cleaning the bathrooms? Yeah, like inevitably you're going to have some toilets Who's back doing up. the general garbage? Yeah, the garbage. That has to be keep- done... It's not like it's done at the end of the game. It's I mean, like you have to continually <laughs> do that over the course of the game. So the maintenance people, who are the most important people <laughs> at the stadium in running the game? No well, getting ready too, Tom, the other thing that's big, you know, getting the tickets out. Like, for example, last week and early this week, the most important people in the athletic department are the guys and the students and the ladies that work in the ticket office Getting those tickets out, mobile tickets, hard tickets, parking passes. Everybody's nervous. A lot of people forget. So that's a great job. But like, for example, today, they had the crane, the people working on the scoreboard today. You know, it's like a dress rehearsal. Yeah, now, sure. that scoreboard hasn't been operating except one time during the, uh, you know, the scrimmage we had a couple weeks ago. And I looked up and I saw that Tommy Casanova, his uh, number retired, got hit by something in a storm. And so they got to replace that. So, and one of the you know, the ribbons that goes around the stadium was out. One section was out. Yeah. Well, these people have to constantly fix it. And for them to be out on a Tuesday for a Saturday game and for it not to rain is a beautiful oh, thing beautiful. when you're working no at rain. LSU. Because the rain can get you. One uh, other thing that's being talked about coming up a Saturday is the bands. You got the oh, golden band from Tigerland. The Human Jukebox, oh, yeah. Southern's I mean, world-renowned the game itself, band. Yeah. Southern's band plays in the marches in the Rose Bowl parade. Yeah, and come the on, Macy. it's a one. Yeah, but LSU band is tremendous too. Uh, Southern band is tremendous. So halftime will be a very, very successful event. Uh, I, I do want to say that people don't realize if you drive on. Uh, Nicholson, you know, and you're right by the stadium, it says South Stadium Drive. That stadium will be clean. It will be clean from 1 in the morning till 6 o'clock. Must say, I am very proud 
of LSU, although that's not only LSU employees, that's a lot of other people as well, and I'm very proud of them. We do well, and uh, the home game is a great one. Come on out and uh, watch the game uh, on TV from the Tiger area. See, a lot of people do that. They just open up the back of their car, pull out the TV, plug it in somewhere, and next thing you know, they're watching the game and eating and enjoying it, and then they leave third quarter. But if you're going to leave at the end, you know, it's a little bit tougher I, if it's a close game. I got to say this, TK. This could be the one game where there's more people at the concession stand in the first and second quarter and nobody leaves at halftime. It's just yeah, the opposite no, right, of a regular right, right. game. I'm telling you, from working at Southern, Good point. and I've seen them. Folks, if, if you're an LSU fan, you've never seen the human jukebox. That's a game in itself. What entertainment you get, what talent they have yeah. and how hard and they, they work. You have to see how hard they work when you're on campus. Good I was fortunate enough to see that and the pride that's there. And, of course, a great thing for the city to have the two bands play together. That's great for both together. schools. One more thing here in the business of sports brought to you by Blumberg and Associates. Had a question from a friend, Charlie, last night who said, ask Coach Bertman during the business of sports section, how does it determine that how many tickets a visiting team receives when they play against LSU, both non-conference, and then I think it's a little different for the conference games. Sure, sure. Conference games uh, are guaranteed 6,000 tickets for your school. Now, if you're going to play Kentucky, uh, they won't take more than 6,000. But if you're going to take Alabama coming here, they're going to want all 6,000 and 6,000 more. All right, they'll have to get those from LSU people. Secondary or, market, a lot of stuff yeah, like a people. secondary market, or uh, you know Alabama people who live up in Baton Rouge now. All right, the the answer to your second question is what happens like Southern right now? Now I, 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 Brian Broussard, the ticket manager, has about sixty eight thousand season ticket holders. Naturally, those seats are taken. The students have 15,000 seats, okay? And the, and the reason for that is they got the giant band that's included in there as well. And, of course, all the students who attend the game, who paid for the tickets. Not all students pay for the tickets, all right? And then, of course, so that's uh, 15, and then there's some that are handicapped that they won't sell until the very end so the answer to the question you know there's about 80 85,000 tickets and that means there's you know 15 to 16,000 maybe 20,000 on the open market at $40 the ticket for southern costs $40 all right on the open market you know it costs $40 it may cost more where you're ever getting it, but the answer to that now six thousand for the conference, probably twenty thousand, depending upon, you know, uh, how many of the people bring, and how many students show up, and so on. So a lot of times people come to the game without a ticket, and they wait till the last minute, and they're able to pick up a ticket, you know, high, somewhere in the stadium. That's that's that happens. But Tommy, for the most part, this, you should have you a season another ticket. question. You said. Where do they sit? Okay, like, okay. for example, we went to Texas. They had us way up. Or <laughs> we sell the season tickets, and then there's a section that's designated that Brian Broussard, the ticket manager, keeps for all visiting teams. So it doesn't move around depending on the opponent. It's there the whole week. I mean, the whole year. Am I correct, Skip? They don't bounce that around. No. So, you know, when we go on the road, somebody says, ah, they try to get us. They want to keep us as far away. No, no that's it, where it, they designated the area because they didn't sell the season there, tickets. It's a rule in the Southeastern Conference. You have to have a certain amount of good seats. Okay, very little. <laughs> you have to have a certain amount. Like we have them in the uh, south end zone. Southeast There's, corner. Southeast, southeast corner. corner. Most of our people. But we have others. We have some on the 47-yard line. But they're low, you see. Right behind the bench. Yeah. They're not as good as the other. Now, you go to Alabama, same thing happens. 
You're not going to get good seats. <laughs> you're going to be up high. You're going to be in the southeast corner. You're going to be low where it's high. Every, don't, don't think LSU doesn't do as well as any other school. We do the same thing that they do that's good. Okay, and we may do a lot of things that they don't do as well as us. All right, that's going to do it for the business of sports with Skip with the AD tie on, brought to you by Blumberg and Associates. We're going to take a break. and we come back, it's going to be time for Dugout Talk, brought to you by Hudco Roofing. And we're going to have uh, former Tiger and College World Series champion Doug Thompson. He's in the house, and he and Coach Bertman are going to have some fun, tell some stories. That's what Hold the Rope's all about, having some fun and telling some stories and entertaining and all that good stuff. Subscribe to us on YouTube, Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. We're back with more after this pause. You are watching Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. If you're in a an accident, a car accident, a slip and fall where you're injured, you need to call an attorney. The defendant insurance company, it's their goal to close the case as quickly as possible and pay out the least amount of money as possible. That's why it's important to call an attorney and uh, call the law offices of O.C. Brown. At the law office of O.C. Brown, we're a family owned firm. We want to be your law firm for a lifetime. Don't have time for a cold, a cut, those allergies, or a sprain? I really don't have time for this. Blake Urgent Care is here to help with easy, convenient online check-in, virtual visits, or walk-in care. Plus, we're kid-friendly and open seven days a week, including holidays and weekends. When you don't have the time to be sick or hurt, feel better faster at Lake Urgent Care and Lake After Hours. Men long for a simpler time when they could sit back and relax in a leather chair with a hot steamy towel for a clean cut and straight razor shave. At Rooster's Men's Grooming Center, you can enjoy the comforts of that old school barber shop with a modern twist. Our stylists and barbers are skilled in classic and current styling techniques to give you the look you want. Rooster's, the grooming destination for guests of all ages. Two locations to serve you, Highland Park Marketplace and Town Center. Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic has been covering LSU baseball for decades. Their physicians have provided care for players of all ages and skill levels. At Brock, they can treat any kind of injury to the shoulder, knee, wrist, or elbow. Brock is also convenient with six locations in the capital area. Their after-hours clinic is open seven days a week for any type of orthopedic injury that happens at night or on the weekends. Skip and I have been with Brock for all of our orthopedic needs, and you should too. Go to www.brortho.com. For all of your insurance solutions, contact the Allegiance Group in Baton Rouge. Health, life, home, auto, property and casualty, and Medicare. That's right. They can enroll you in Medicare or review your Medicare plan. Beautiful new office located on Jefferson Highway across from the Bocage entrance. Locally owned and operated, great customer service. Connect on Facebook and Instagram with the Allegiance Group Insurance Solutions. That's the Allegiance Group Insurance Solutions. Welcome back to Skip and Cano. Uh, hold the rope with Skip and Cano. I'll get it right there, Coach. Uh, this segment brought to you by Dependable Storage, the good folks over there. And this segment we want to bring to you is Dugout Talk. And this is uh, brought to you by Hudco Roofing Dugout Talk. We got a great picture of Coach Bertman and Coach Canterbury from a few years right. ago with uh, Hudco Roofing and Exteriors. And they're going to bring you this Dugout Talk. And for this segment, we welcome to the show. Number nine, Doug Thompson. Oh, man. Thank you all for having me. Always love talking about but the listen, good old days. He, he, Doug's Certainly been great coach. for Cano and for myself for just about everything. Doug, are you 45? 46. Just 46, 46 already. Yes, uh, it's just a wonderful you, thing 
for me and for Cano to be able to still be in touch with kids who are 45, 46, and even older. And uh, it's just a wonderful thing. Uh, Doug just happens to be especially gifted not only as a baseball player, but also as a businessman. And, of course, uh, he coaches his kids. I'm very proud of him. His wife is a superstar. She does her job, and the kids are wonderful. And it's just great, Cano, for me to see that. Uh, now, not just on Doug, Thanks, of coach. course, but on many others. Yeah, like I was telling you, Skip, I went to the Alumni Association uh, function before the football game, see Eric Berthelot, Billy Bryan, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Chad, Chad Vaught, yeah. and see these guys you don't see all the time, but yeah. they're – yeah, you got beautiful children. Their wives are there. They're successful. Chad Watts, a dentist. Well, now, they, <laughs> you they're, know. They're, those are great kids. You yeah. told me about that. But they're not like uh, Doug in the sense that Doug won the national championship and pitched on Friday night and won all 10 games. <laughs> now, in those days, you played uh, the 10 opponents. 10 weekends, yeah. 10 weekends, and he won all 10. All right, uh, you know, so he's a, a – and he played professional ball for, what, eight years? Uh, about five and a half, five, five and a half six years. years something seemed like, like eight years, though, didn't it? Well, it did. you, you, you played <laughs> – After year one, it seemed like eight years. You, but yeah. you went to AAA ball, right? I did, and uh, ended up, you know, having some elbow problems at the end. But, yeah, uh, you know, that's a little bit it's of – It's a battle. It's a battle. At that, in those years, you're, you know, you're, you're tri <laughs> AAA, but you're – they didn't – today, if you were in AAA – you're coming up, you know. They're yeah. going to test you out. Not a, there were not as many minor league teams as there were when Doug was playing, and so they move kids a lot faster now, whether they're talented uh, or not. Uh, Doug, we need you, Tommy. We need you to introduce Doug for a uh, a story time. Oh. Skip story time. Yeah, we, we get lots of former players that yeah. tell lots of stories. There's people, so many. People love this portion of the show. Uh, and uh, I know you got a lot, but you got to come does. with something good here. He no does. holes barred now. This yeah. is, uh, you can let it fly <laughs> a little bit like Ronnie Rance did a couple of weeks ago. No, I'm, I'm prepared. I, I thought about a couple things, uh, you know, throughout the day. But on what you just said, Coach, I think that's a testament to you guys, right? Uh, I liken a, a relationship between a coach and a player uh, to the same kind of thing, like a former teammate or a former roommate. You don't have to talk to that guy every day, and you can go 10 years That's right. without ever seeing that person. Mm. Uh, but when you see him, and I, all of us, it's not just athletes and coaches, mm. all of us have those type of people in our lives. Mm. Uh, but, you know, not every coach has that with their players. And I think what you guys did and what we have, of course, we're all a big part of here, uh, you know, help that. But uh, nothing better than, than sitting down talking about the good old days, Coach, with you. Uh, and Cano and UTK. I mean, there, there were so many great times and so many great people to share those times with. Thank you. You know, you talk about that, the 97 reunion we had during the season. Mm -hmm. Keith Polazola shows yeah. up like it, it was like yesterday. Yeah. You are in the dugout with him. Yeah, Conan Horton. Uh, I mean, Conan within, Horton. I haven't seen family. Conan Horton since the dog pile in 1997. <laughs> I mean, like literally almost. Because you might not have made Like it literally you almost, you know. And, and I mean, we haven't – we maybe texted once or twice – and, you know, I saw Conan, um, uh, you know, I couldn't spend as much time with the guys that I really liked to that weekend. Um, but I, I, by, within three minutes, we were talking about a cross-up that we had in the championship game. I mean, oh, three minutes had gone amazing? by. No, and no, he said no. he was thinking about it the other day. And I said, you know, we never talked about that. And he said, you know, I gave you the sign that you threw. I just... In my mind, I was used to so many curveballs. You threw a fastball, and it just kind of startled me. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it's just like that. I mean, uh, time uh, is a thief, as we all know, but it's, it's great to get back and, and talk to you guys. But uh, One of the weekends we had with Doug was a record weekend, but not good in the beginning, but wonderful at the end. That was at Alabama. Oh. And the championship year, and they beat us twenty-eight to two. Yeah. All right, now that happens in baseball. Well, it doesn't happen often, but it <laughs> happened that day. Unfortunately, Doug yeah. started that game. I did. It was Friday night. It was Saturday. It was Saturday, and Doug mm -hmm. started the game. Yeah, lots of stuff happened that weekend, Coach. Well, first of all, it was literally the last three games of the regular season. Uh, yes. All we had to do 
to clinch the SEC title was win one of the three. That's it. Um, Patrick Coogan pitched on Friday night, pitched a great game, but it was like a, you know, late inning, late solo home run uh, in the bottom of the eighth, bottom of the seventh. We couldn't, uh, it was just, it was, it was one of those two to one, you know, I can't believe we just lost that game. And then that as coach mentioned, one. Saturday I go out, it's a day game. Uh, it's rocking. Remember, Alabama's ranked two. It's not the 23rd ranked Alabama. And they team. had attendance and they had it rocking. They had it all going. I mean, they had Joe Caruso and the Vaz guy who's Vaz and who's so great. And his son's doing really well as well. Uh, but so many, Dustin Moore in these, they were just packed one through one through nine. And they had guys that could throw it. It was just a really solid year for them as well. Um, and then I started that game and I gave up two runs in the first inning. Memory serves. I don't really remember, but Brandon Larson hit a solo home run in the top of the first inning or the top of the second inning. And then I go out and I give up a grand slam uh, with two outs in the second inning, and, and here comes Coach Burtman. And I am begging. I did that a lot to stay in the game. Come on, Coach, you got to let me stay in the game. You and he said verbatim, he said, uh, no, listen, uh, Dougie boy, look, uh, <laughs> I gotta, I'm going to take you out, and I'm going to save you for tomorrow. Uh, you got to trust me. It's going to be bad today. <laughs> I swear to you. What was the score? Like six to two? Six to one oh. with oh. the grand slam, the two runs. Of the, I gave up the inevitable two. And you know what's crazy about that, though? Side note, like as a pitcher, I never remember in my life feeling so good before the game. Oh, my God. That, but that's so true. Like in the bullpen, I was like, I might strike out 20 guys. Today. I mean, I yeah. really felt like I had my best stuff. And we, I couldn't, and no one else that day could figure it out. I'm, I'm still convinced they had the signs or something. Uh, it seemed like that at least. But 28 to two uh, was the final score. But in that game, coach, I, I'll, I'm going to leave the players' names that need to be protected. <laughs> but it's a player to be named later. <laughs> exactly. Um, at some point, we're losing the game. I want to say it was 16 to two. It's probably the fifth or sixth inning, and Coach Burtman, the greatest motivator of all time. Like, I've seen him make a room full of guys, almost destroy the room. Like, the coaches after the game, like, hey, easy on, the, on, the, on throwing the chairs, right? Like, you, <laughs> but he could really get that out of us. And, uh, he, you know, everybody up, uh, everybody up in the dugout. And I was like, whoa. Like, remember, I started the game. I'm bitter. But I'm thinking to myself, this will be the greatest. If he's got something right now. <laughs> All right. Yeah. If this guy can talk us back in right now. <laughs> then he's the, he's the the greatest of all time, but it wasn't it wasn't that no moment. it was more of he a went oppo on it you? was the opposite it, uh, oppo. it was exactly the opposite it was demeaning it was demoralizing it was <laughs> it was hey guys uh, look uh, they told me they rented a charter bus the fans and uh, you're embarrassing them your parents see they drove in from all over to watch you play. And uh, you're embarrassing them, too. Uh, let's try to score a couple runs. No, he wasn't saying let's try to win the game. It was 16-2 to two in the fifth inning. So let's try to sit, score a couple runs here to not be so embarrassed. And it was obviously just one of those, like, trying to he's get you. so mad. People love very, Skip. Very and, upset. and they love Coach Barry. He's great, and he's so great with people. And he really, really is great with people. But I have never met or been around a more fierce competitor. Right. When he's angry in the middle, when, when they say play ball, there's no more Mr. Nice Guy, you know, Skip Burton. Uh, no, he's not grandfather Skip then. He's, no, 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 no. He's a boxer Skip. He's no, after the game, he'll stop and sign the autograph. Don't ask him for an autograph during the middle of the I've seen that. I've seen that eight-year-old little boy's face in the middle of the game. Yeah. When he's asking for an autograph, just don't do it, right? So he's pissed as can be, and he's walking off, and the player to be named uh, later – <laughs> who's a fifth or sixth year senior. Poor guy's got, he's got scars all over the place. He's had several surgeries. He's been to war, you know, he's got several he's coming surgeries. coming back from Iraq. He's yeah. one of the toughest dudes I know, though, uh, to be honest. And, and he says this, and it, it just, it didn't strike him the right way. And he, he was trying to be a leader, right? And he right. tried to, and he said, I'll use some cleaner words, but he said, screw that guy. If that guy wants to give up, let him. But what if we did win this game? Then what would they say? And Coach Burtman, about mid-walk back, turned around. This guy hadn't pitched since the fall. He hadn't pitched. 
He was hurt. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> he, was, he was good enough to pitch now, but in the fan and pitched, he said, you're in. <laughs> you remember uh, that? And that guy had to go. He said, he turned around and said, okay, you're in. Like, go down and get loose. It's your turn to pitch. And let's just say it didn't go too well. <laughs> it didn't go too well. But that was one of the moments where, like, you realize the difference between, you know, this guy was serious about his job, right? And that moment for us really made it possible the next day to come back and win. Actually, uh, let's, get, let's get that in. I don't want Doug to talk about himself. Uh, let's get that in. All right. We go to the hotel, and we try and come up with a way to, to win one game, you know, to be the SEC champ. And what's our best way to do that? And, of course, the first thing is we need Doug Thompson to pitch. Now, he had pitched, you know, I don't know how many pitches, but not mm. many, you know, the day before, but not too successfully, as Doug indicated. And I told him I could bring him back, but I didn't intend on starting him, to be honest. And uh, at the hotel, I thought that was a reasonable request. Uh, the, another one was uh, hit Brandon Larson – Third, you know, the kid's trying. Now, we're all trying to find a way. And sure enough, Doug starts the game. No. What? No. Who Joey started? Joey Painich. Oh, I'm sorry. Game. I don't want to start Doug, so I start a, a good pitcher, yeah. Joey Painich. That's correct. Ten I'm wins sorry. that year. Yeah. Pardon? He had ten wins that year. He's a dang yeah. good Oh, he's very good. What a big game. The but, I don't, but the reason yeah, I'm big, not starting big, Doug big is because he pitched – you know the next, the earlier in the day, the next week. Excuse me, next yes, day sir. earlier. The, yeah. And I didn't want to start Doug. And Painage is pretty good. All right. How long did Painage go? He went. We'd have to really check. Do we have a stat check? Uh, hey, Doug, four, I want to four, say this. There's people. Maybe to the fifth. Maybe to the fourth with two nah, outs. Maybe he, to the fifth he, with two nah. outs. Maybe the fifth inning with two outs. Let's just no, say. No, like not that far because Doug pitched. No hit baseball for this is great. Five man. innings, no hits by Alabama. Remember the guy that gave up the granny the no. day before, but no hit. Alabama baseball. got thirty hits the day before. Thirty hits in the game before. <laughs> they to were see. they ran out of all their hits. That's yeah, what happened. Yeah. They didn't try. They got tired of swinging. But coach, do you remember <laughs> when you brought me in the game? Do you remember what you said? Uh, no, you no. Don't. well, no. Tell me because, uh, uh, oh yeah, if I'm take I'm taking you out the first hit that you give up. That's what you said. Because he had pitched the day before, and I didn't want him to feel like he had to pitch the whole game. He don't give up a hit. <laughs> Finally, he gives up a hit. We're winning. I go out and say, Dougie boy, you got to come out now. And of course, he, he two hit. outs in the ninth. Really. You know, so I, I mean, I just want to save every pitch I could. He stuck he went to his word. Come on. Yeah. He said to me, it was rocking. Like, I mean, the Cotton Eye Joe was pumping, Skip's <laughs> walking out there. You know, when I'm running in, Eddie Furnace looks up and he's like, what? You know, he can't believe that I'm coming back in from, you know, the day before. Like, it didn't work yesterday. Why would it work today? You know? <laughs> Eddie was the smartest guy on the team, you know? Yes, he was. Well, when I, when I go in. Smartest guy in the field. <laughs> Skip puts the ball in my glove. And I thought he said one hit and you're out. And I, I did say off. that. And I asked Conan Horton, what did he say? And he <laughs> said, I didn't hear him. Yeah. And I said, coach, which is, you know, when he's, when he's, he was upset. He well, was, we he were was losing competing. He's fighting. With, with Joey and he walked Painage. back up there and he, I said, I didn't hear you. And he said, one hit and you're out of the game. You got me now? And I was like. Well, yeah. All right, that's not what. <laughs> all right, that's not what you usually say to a pitcher of that goes in. Of yeah. course, yeah, of course. It was very unusual to hear. It was very unusual yeah. for him to be pitching. Yeah. That day, because he had pitched the day before. Yeah, it's very unusual. On the other hand, he's a gutsy kid. Even if his arm wasn't feeling great, he would never say a word. And so I, <laughs> one hit and you're out. Meaning, well, I didn't know that he was going to throw no-hit ball. <laughs> and anyway, we win the championship. He throws no-hit ball. But, yes, but the guy gets a blooper. <laughs> I'm walking out to take him out. And, you know. <laughs> Meanwhile, I want to say this. You know, you yeah. talked about, do we have any stats on Painich, you know, player? 
I want to know probably of the viewers that are watching, over half of them went to Google and they pulled up that box score to try to figure out yeah. who the player to be named later was yeah. in that game. Yeah, I'm sure and they then how many uh, innings Joey Painich pitched. They're looking at it right well, now. Well, Joey Painich yeah. pitched how many that game? Three and a third. They're, they're, you're, you're hearing that info? No. No, no. We, we, we're I'm saying, I'm somebody's guessing. looking at it. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. guessing. Yeah, I hope People, so. Somebody's I'm looking at somebody it. Made, yeah. Nobody's commented on it yet. They're still searching great, for it. Uh, great kid, Joey Painich. That was a great effort, one of the great efforts I've oh. seen all through my career, including, you know, World Series and all kinds of players, by a pitcher member to win the Southeastern Conference, which was a big deal because it puts you up into the rankings oh, yeah. so you're going to have the regional at home. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't, you know, otherwise Alabama has the regional, say, at home. But Doug was too tough. And, uh, you know, the idea of start Doug came to me, and I thought about it, and I said, nah, it puts too much pressure in the first inning. You know, the inevitable, too, it's hard to get him out in the first inning, especially on the road. And I didn't want him to go through that again. And so Joey did a reasonable job, but they're so good, Alabama. We met him for the national championship. Yeah. How odd is that? You know, that's how good both teams were. And uh, anyway, uh, that's a great story, Doug. <laughs> TK. No, that's a, that's that's good stuff, man. I, that's uh, And like you said, I, I liked when you said how you saw Conan Horton for the first time. And yeah. Who knows how long. And you're talking about him crossing up to Satan. Yeah, we do. That's it, baseball. It's all about stories. It really is. It, 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 it really sports is. is all about stories. Maybe more so even baseball. I'd say what's amazing, especially with this guy, the recollection, right, for guys who were in that moment or that play, the things that you can remember. I mean, almost the ball, the, the, the seam spinning, the way they were spinning. But this guy, we were talking about the 1998 World Series recently. Yeah. And, you know, um, you know, he won five, but he'd be the first to tell you, you know, he didn't win any championships. He just lost all the ones that he lost. I mean, all the players <laughs> win the games and the coaches lose the games. Um, yeah. But he was talking about a play – where, you know, uh, and I didn't remember it until he said it, but he, he had backed Furnace up uh, yeah. the, the, the pitch before. That's correct. He backed Eddie deep, and, of course, the ball was hit right to Eddie. And yeah. Eddie fielded it and threw it, and it was a one-hopper to Josh Dalton. And when Eddie threw it, he – That's right. And Josh Dalton – was coming across the bag just, and actually picked it unbelievably and came yeah. up to throw, but no there was one was there. nobody at first. And Coach said, if we, we win that World Series, perhaps, if I, put if I up, just yeah. keep Furnace on the grass. And I was like, wow. I mean, that is – that's deep, deep, deep stuff there, right, that, that only the coach that has to think about those things. Well, I'm going to say that goes to the no-blame philosophy that was taught by Coach Burtman yeah. that he – lived with like yeah. it was everything that went bad was his fault i could say that as being assistant coach he always took the blame and then taught you guys how to take the blame and figure out how to fix it yeah, yeah. i mean that, that was like meeting three the transfer of blame right, yeah. like right. it's america's it favorite one. pastime it's not really baseball and and cracker jacks it's, yeah, it's the transfer of blame and look what look at today i mean <laughs> you've got everybody blaming each other for everything that's wrong in the world it's really uh, become an infestation across the across the globe of transferal of blame. Yeah, you no you said it best, it. you know, 30 years ago, Coach. That's good stuff, Doug. We need you to hang around. Of course. We got, Stay right there, Doug. Yeah, we got coming up, uh, the next segment's going to be the motivational moment brought to you by Marucci. Mm. And we got some good stuff here with these two guys with the motivational moment. That'll be up next. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's important. Need you to do that for Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. We'll be back with more right after this pause. Stay with us. In a world where a vehicle needs maintenance and repair, it takes a special set of skills and specific tools to get the job done. If you visit one dealership this year, visit Jerry Lane Chevrolet, because there you'll find the technician. Sammy's famous cheese sticks are the bomb.
Sammy's better than ever. La Carreta is the place for after work fun, but that's just the beginning of why we've been in South Louisiana for over two decades. Follow your nose to the best Mexican grill and experience fresh ingredients, fun indoor and outdoor dining, and fast and friendly service. Like our Facebook page for event news and live music announcements. Visit CarretaRestaurant.com to find daily specials for your local La Carreta. Fresh, fun, and festive, it's where the fiesta begins. I got a guy. That's right, White Glove Service. We can handle your monthly maintenance around your business or your home with our professional team members. Ask how to get set up and what plans we offer. One call for most trades. Not sure who to call? Reach out to us. I got a guy. Our skills are broad across many trades. Our talented team members can handle most jobs across multiple trades with only a single visit. Hourly rates are available. Call 985-622-0025. That's 985-662-0025. Or send an email to info at igotaguyservice.com. Email info at igotaguyservice.com. We continue with Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. We got Dan Canterbury, Skip Berman, Doug Thompson in the house. Justin Vincent's here. He'll be joining us next segment with lots of football talk there. No question about that. This next segment is brought to you by La Caretta. Always good stuff at La Caretta. And it is the motivational moment brought to you by Marucci. Marucci does such a great job from youth sports on up to the big leagues. It's the motivational moment. You got a little picture there, Coach Bertman doing some motivation, brought to you by Marucci. Doug and Skip, take it away. Well, let me say this to Doug. Uh, you know, the whole package of motivation, it's not just the stories before the game. It's not just the videos before no. the game or the Sunday special speaker series or sheets that were put in your locker. It's a kind of a whole thing together kind of thing that makes the motivation mm -hmm. work. Uh, you, you were, I'm gonna tell a story that I would, you pro, you've heard twice in your life. <laughs> okay, as your junior, senior year, because we never stole this, we never told the story twice. The stories, what made them even super more effective is they were told before the game, like 10 minutes to 15 minutes before the game. You know, in a great learning experience, when your mind is thinking, Jesus, what's going to happen tonight? Am I going to get the winning hit? Maybe I'll make an error, you know, and so on. Everything's happening. And the story with all the people looking at you uh, works well at that time. And, of course, you remember all of those. What do you remember most about the stories before the game? Well, today, uh, you know, coaching my son's football <laughs> team, we, we talked about dream busters. And, you know, that comes from the Roger Bannister story. You know, everybody said it couldn't be done and uh, it was impossible. And, and that was a story that, of course, there's so many things uh, to be learned from. Uh, you talked about Rocky Marciano, uh, Oksana Bayul. Uh, <laughs> there were so many, Coach. I mean, yeah, uh, right. it's hard to really say which one was most impactful because uh, the other thing you did well was kind of pick the right story for the moment. Yes. Uh, the series that we were in or the game that yes. we were up against. The um, package. That's right. And, of course, hold the rope was a, a, a great but kind of like one of the – That was the thread. The, that that's right. It was kind corner. of like the main staple of the whole thing. Right. Um, but there, there were so many good ones. And uh, what I remember is uh, them being so relative to the moment, uh, how you would oh, pick the one that, that mostly like, – yeah. Like this story I'm about, about to tell where uh, anyone can be the hero is the motto of the story mm -hmm. about Greg Alina – from the University of Miami, 
who I actually coached. Well, I didn't coach him. He didn't play. He was a 4.0 engineering student who came out, and because of the large tuition at Miami, had very few. We didn't even have 25 players. All right, he came out, and he was, he said, you catch. He said, okay. In the bullpen. In the bullpen only. He never played a game until his fourth year. But then in his fifth year, uh, he was really something. At the uh, plate. At i got to say at the plate he, because he, we had to get someone to throw the ball back when he was In, in the beginning, he, the he had back. to do that. That's how This is uh, 1985? Three. The, 1983. Three. Got what? Uh, Lloyd, put the Marucci. Hit it, Lloyd. Uh, <laughs> thing. Hit it, Lloyd. The boys get together. i got to have a lot of eye contact. Okay, I'm not going to begin the story until... I see everybody looking at me, okay? And uh, this one happened June 6th in 1985 in Omaha, University of Miami playing Mississippi State. Uh, Mississippi State had Will Clark, Rafael Romero, Robbie Thigpen, and Jeff Brantley. Uh, and they had other big league ball players as well, probably the best team that's ever played in college baseball. But the university has what we have. They had heart, balls, and they never give up attitude. A well-pitched game finds it one nothing in the ninth. Uh, Calvin James, a kid I recruited, gets a walk off Brantley to lead in the bottom of the ninth when it's 1-0. Okay, naturally, Brantley had pitched the entire game. Remember, the guy that won the most. And then Thigpen was summoned from right field like many times before. Coach Ron Frazier, my old boss, goes to the bench, gets a pinch hitter named Greg Alina. Now, as I told you earlier, he was a walk-on, of course, but he, he never played. Until his fourth year, he played some, but he never caught. He was only a DH. And in his fifth year, he had 56 at-bats when Coach Frazier called upon him. Now, he was an avid weightlifter and a bulldog of a kid. Coach Frazier wasn't going to bunt, which is uh, he wanted to win now because bunting is not the way to go, even though it's very common. That's a safe way out for the coach. And the count goes to 2-2. Two and two. Greg Alino hits one over the scoreboard, and the U.M. wins the game 2-1. to one. The story's been replayed on ESPN in many other places, it's absolutely true. By the way, then the U.M. went to beat Stanford. See, that wasn't for the national championship, that game. That was the game before. So now, and I say to the players, whether you're a three-year, four-year, or one-year starter, today we need all of you. Transfer belief to the players in the game. Let them know you believe. That stuff is transferable. Send the message to the other dugout. They're going home tonight without a W. And when the, your time comes, remember, we believe in you. It takes all of us, each one of us, for any of us to be successful. I know you'll be successful because you represent LSU, your family, and your maker. And uh, we're back now, Lloyd. We're back. And uh, I wanted to make sure that you know i got the story in there and i'm not saying that it motivates people just watching here i'm saying that it falls into the categories doug said at the time of the team we we're playing where i probably had a new player or two going into the game or definitely if there's a new pitcher say into the game but uh, i'm not sure but the reason that Doug can't mention, remember, he only heard the stories twice in his life. Don't repeat a story, although many are certainly repeatable and repetition is good. But I like the, the not to repeat them, and I didn't repeat any of the videos either. No, um, the videos were great. I like new ones. I think that made the boys more effective. Uh, put new sheets every day in their lockers were different every Sunday. Uh, had a speaker during the other team's batting practice instead of the video. And we had a speaker like Richard Lipsy, yeah. uh, a good friend of mine, a businessman, philanthropist, uh, came to speak and said, Richard, you don't have to motivate the team. Just tell us 
if you failed at any time in your career, and if so, you must have done something to come back because you're a superstar. And he came in, and I can remember he told me later that Gary email wrote him a uh, thank you note. Wow. And I can remember I told Dan I saw the baseball that we give the guy for speaking on Eric Lane's uh, desk. Yeah, we went in to visit with him, and it was right and there. With the balls are, I mean, it had to be 20, uh, 30 years ago. Ball, <laughs> balls still sitting there. And uh, anyway, those things all are part of a motivational package, and Doug's very kind uh, to me to say those things. All that being said, let's get it straight. Call your parents. You know, tell them you're doing well. Don't ask for money and tell them everything is great so they feel good. Now you know how that feels, Doug. Yeah, of course. Okay, when your kids are happy, you're happy. Mm -hmm. Coach, I want to say this. You know, when you talk about the motivation, motivational moments, and Doug, the package, you're a great example of this. Not only did it help us win baseball games, of course, and I've heard the stories 27 times. You sure. know what I mean? Forever, <laughs> That's right? That's right. That's right. <clears throat> but, Doug, when you're in business, some of those stories and the things you heard in the huddle before the game or you saw in a video or you saw in your locker, doesn't that come to you when you're in business oh. and you're trying to make a deal? Every- or when you're dealing with your child or you're coaching in a ball game with your kids or – you know, dealing with your wife, all those things that we learned in this motivational moment came to play in our lives. That's what makes, uh, a, a, you know, the difference between a good coach and a great coach is someone that impacts you forever. Right. And this man has impacted not only me, but my son, for example, <laughs> uh, when they it's stress, when they're stressed, is exactly. well, it's, it's when they're stressed out for a test or it's a big <laughs> game or a big at bat, uh, I tell them, hey, all we can do is all we can do, but all we can do is enough. And there's hundreds of those. And right? they're ingrained in They're you. ingrained. Uh, you don't they, have you know, to look them up. The difference between winning and losing is that much. Everything matters. Uh, you got to heighten your awareness to be excellent. And on and on and on. Um, and I'm laughing because you said the difference between winning and losing is this much. That, because it was on the wall. But Patrick Coogan always says the difference between winning and losing is a it's circle that change. Much. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, but it's true. And, and he used to even say that back then, right? Especially to tell your parents you love them, you got to call them. Um, he was trying to. Don't make ask us, for money. Exactly. He was trying to make us better ball players, of course. Um, but he was really more interested. And he boasts about it today. I've heard him. I've heard him tell a room full of a thousand people that of course he's proud of Todd Walker and Ben McDonald and all these wonderful people who had wonderful baseball careers. But I've heard him say that he's just as proud of the guys who have families and go to work every day uh, that he is who are successful businessmen and successful fathers. And that means something to him, and it meant something to him way back then to every team he had, whether they were a championship team or not. I'm going to steal a line from Scott Woodward and Skip Burtman. They both use it a lot. Coach, you're an elite coach. Before <laughs> nice. they called him elite coaches, he was an elite coach. Well, thanks. Yeah. Well, yeah. one thing I took when you said that you made sure players had eye contact with you at all times when you were talking to them. And that should be a lesson for everybody watching, for the, whether you're playing travel ball, high school ball, whatever. When your coach is speaking, look him in the eye and pay attention. And listen to what he, ha- he or she has to say. Thanks. And, and, and you, I took that earlier when you said that you gotta make sure they had eye contact with me because i know that's important and Very young important. kids need to know that if it's an eight-year-old that's team so that if the coach is speaking and recruiting attention yeah but you I know what it's back recruit. to what we were talking about with life when someone's speaking to you look them in the eyes yeah. right it starts right there like he was uh he was transcendent in so many ways and i'll tell you think about this in terms of being a visionary First of all, the data and analytics, right? Like you walk in all the other dugouts when we played, no one else had all the stuff. Remember the stuff on the walls and the music stand and all? (laughs) This guy was using analytics before anyone at ESPN even knew what analytics were. His track man was right here. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) And look today, the main thing you see of all these great football programs and baseball programs are the hype videos. Yes. 
we were doing high videos 30 years ago. Sure. Uh, when when someone was having to cut the tape and record, and it was video cassette <laughs> tapes, yeah, right? The, the, the and someone VCR, was, yeah, someone was up VCR. until 2 a.m. recording the yeah. Friday night game. So Saturday, when we came That's in there, right. we would have a video that was to music and movies and all this cool stuff. But with our likeness on the screen, it was it was just transcend. It was, He's just such a visionary, and, and that's why I'm always here for you, Coach. Whatever you guys need, you can. Uh, uh, thanks, um, uh, man. Doug. Thanks, Doug. And yeah. Doug, we certainly thank you for of your course, time tonight. Of course, anytime. We appreciate Lots of fun. Anytime. Uh, a lot of great memories, no question about that. Of and, course. Uh, it's much appreciated. Thank you. Anytime, guys. Thank you all for having me. All right, we're going to take a break. We come back. we got Justin Vincent. Yeah, it'll be time to talk LSU football. Uh, Tigers uh, took one on the chin the other night, but they get to line up again this Saturday. Justin's got a lot of insight and, and comments about that. We'll do that when we return. You are watching Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Stay tuned. happiness and stuff think about it when you're single you own some stuff then you get married that's like double the stuff here come the kids even more stuff tons of stuff then the kids move out what do you do with all that stuff dependable storage has you covered our sliding doors are easier to use than those roll-up doors and just as secure dependable storage wants your stuff and with seven locations why go anywhere else check us out at dependablestorage.com Men long for a simpler time when they could sit back and relax in a leather chair with a hot, steamy towel for a clean cut and straight razor shave. At Rooster's Men's Grooming Center, you can enjoy the comforts of that old school barbershop with a modern twist. Our stylists and barbers are skilled in classic and current styling techniques to give you the look you want. Rooster's, the grooming destination for guests of all ages. Two locations to serve you, Highland Park Marketplace and Town Center. If you live on the north shore of Lake Pontchartrain and you have a son or daughter that plays baseball or softball, you need to know about Six Rings Baseball Camps. Held at beautiful Coquille Park Recreational Facility and run by Dan Canterbury, Six Rings will teach baseball skills, play instructional games, and have fun playing the great game of baseball. Go to our website at www.sixringsbaseball.com for more information on our upcoming Thanksgiving and Christmas baseball camps. Six Rings Baseball. Learn the game to love the game. Are you a baseball fan, LSU fan, sports fan, or success fan? Purchase your copy of Everything Matters in Baseball, the story of the building of the most successful college baseball program in history. This book details the path to the decade of excellence culminating in five national championships in 10 years at LSU. Starting from humble beginnings, Skip Burtman changed baseball to LSU, the SEC, and the entire college baseball world. Get your copy of this entertaining and inspiring story today by going to www.acadianhouse/sports. We continue with Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano here on a Tuesday night. We're here Tuesday nights at 6 o'clock. Spread the word and connect on social media, including YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Right now, it's our pleasure to bring along a BCS national champion, MVP at the Sugar Bowl, Justin Vincent. What was that, 68-yard run, first play from scrimmage? Something like that. So, somewhere up in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, somewhere up in there. But he's, he's it felt a, like a 120-yard sprint, didn't it? He's a champion, <laughs> and it's uh, our pleasure to have him here on Hold the Rope. It is. The, uh, JV right now works at the Tiger Athletic Foundation and does a, a very successful job of uh, the toughest business in the world. Like Dan is involved raising money. And they give it to the Tiger Athletic Foundation. Of course, they ultimately help out uh, our athletic department from football all the way down to the last sport, whatever that is. Uh, JV, I want to ask you something. Uh, what's your opinion 
Uh, the game was played. Uh, all of us feel bad that if you're rooting for LSU, you feel terrible. Um, and naturally, I'm not going to say anything bad, and neither are you. But we, it, other than the fact that we didn't play as well as we should have or could have, okay, and what do you think was the reason for that, if you know that reason? You know, obviously, first game jitters is, is a real thing, right? It's the first live action you've had, you know, instead of hitting on each other. Um, I think, you know, after the first few licks, you start to get the feel of yourself, and then you start to, try to be coming to your own. But I think the guys, um, whether it was stage fright at first or, or what may it be, um, people got to realize this also. I mean, Last year we played a bowl game with 39 scholarship athletes, right? Right. With a wide receiver playing QB. Um, so it's a rebuilding process. Things aren't going to go as smooth. Obviously the guys made a tremendous effort uh, coming yes. back at the end. Obviously you let one slip through the cracks and block a, a potential uh, game time uh, field goal to send us extra points to send us in overtime. But those things happen. They'll clean that up and it'll be fine. JV, yeah. I got a question for you. You uh, – are played for Nick Saban, mm -hmm. and then Saban left, and then Les Miles came in. Now, the team all pretty much stayed. You yeah. didn't lose people. The transfer portal wasn't there at that point in time. How big a transition, I don't think folks that, that haven't played realize, from one coach to another with the same players, it's almost like when Les Miles came, you became a rookie again. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, you're basically starting from scratch. You're, you're auditioning again, right? Um, you know, the new ball coach doesn't know who you are particularly, and he might have watched a little bit of tape. But at the end of the day, you're meeting him for the first time. He's meeting you for the first time. You're meeting the new assistant coaches. You know, his philosophy he's putting into place, what he expects of you, he's putting into place. Um, you know, I think he's new won that. New terminology. Yeah, new terminology. I think, he's won, I, I think he's won that battle with the kids. Um, I think they respect him. I think they're, they're buying into what he's selling. And obviously what we saw was the first live action of a, of a new ball club. Mm -hmm. I hope people uh, will think like I'm thinking right now. Uh, our coach, as Justin uh, had mentioned, I think I had four weeks of practice with so many new players. He only knew 39 guys from the spring before. So we had Not even really, 39. A lot of them left. Yeah, but most of them, <laughs> many of them weren't there. But of the ones that are there, that's all he knew. Didn't know those new kids that transferred in at the time. Okay. Since then, of course, he's learned them. Uh, he Remember, he's a Hall of Fame coach, is Brian Kelly. No matter what happens, he's a Hall of Fame coach already. But uh, he does a great job before the game, after the game, uh, during the game at halftime, uh, speaking publicly, you could tell he's a veteran coach, that he knows just about everything. So I'm, I'm with Justin. I think they'll be all right. And I think that if you just give this coach and the players a little more time to evolve, you know, into a team, uh, like Saban's teams evolved into a national champion over a period of time, so uh, I'm not saying that, you know, Brian Kelly has to win the national championship to be a great coach. I'm just saying that that's how it worked for number 25 here. Uh, Justin, uh, uh, what do you think about my four-week theory? Yeah. Tell the folks a little more about that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like you said, it's a learning process, right? you got to get to know the kids. You're having your one-on-one -on -one meetings before you even get on the grass, figure out you know, who's buying in and who's not, who's, you know, with the portal, it, it changes everything, right? You got to worry about you talking to a kid today and then tomorrow he's in the portal without him telling you. So, you know, those things are, are, are something new that a lot of ball coaches have to deal with. I think uh, over time it'll become better. I think, you know, for everybody's sake, if the NCAA would fix the portal to where it used to be where your kid had to sit out a year, you would see less of that and more kids staying and, and, and staying true to their commitment to that university but that's not the case right now they got to go with the hand they're dealt and i think uh with time you know this ball club is going to be pretty decent you know i i think you know it's still like you said a learning curve you got a lot of new faces starting um you know look at somebody like will campbell you know he he got a good dose of what what it's like to be out there on the island one-on-one -on -one. 
you know, with some, with some real dudes and not blocking, you know, your teammates and them, uh-huh. maybe a little brother long going on and all that stuff. But that kid will be fine. He'll be, you know, an all SEC guy. He'll be an all American, all that good stuff. It just takes time. I think if we'd have had us a, 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 a warm up game to this, Things yes. may be a little different. If we played yeah. Southern first and then played this game, it would yeah. be a different story. I, I think yeah. that would make a big yeah. difference. Yeah, I think that that Florida State had an advantage in that they played a game. And, of course, we're certainly as good as Florida State, you know, in a, such a close ball game. But we didn't play well. And Florida State's quarterback was just amazing that night. Oh, did yeah. he complete a – yeah, Boy, he was, he was amazing. People Coach, on his ask- legs and he still hit them. Let me let me ask you this. A lot of people don't understand. This is for the fans out there. And again, we want to educate. You know, people say, "Ah, oh, we should have played a warm-up game." Tell them when the schedule was made for this year. How long ago was it made? Oh, maybe seven years. <laughs> yeah, so you don't know. <laughs> yeah, and they didn't have the Louisiana yeah. kickoff. Tell them the advantage of playing in the dome instead of playing at home or playing an away game, which is even worse. Well, playing away, both teams got thirty thousand. The rest of the tickets go to the TV people. And that's why people got a little confused. And Florida State, uh, excuse me, uh, you know, say I must commend, you know, Florida State brought a lot of people and used their 30,000 tickets. So I'll give them a lot of credit for that. That's why we couldn't get more. Okay. On the other hand, this wasn't a game that was won by the fans. Uh, this they don't win or lose games, in my opinion. I'm sorry. Uh, but they But they can – give you an advantage to win a game. I will say that, no doubt about that. And I think our fans are great at that. And for Southern, I think it's be a great game. And um, Justin has information, see, that we don't have about Southern, which I don't have any information other than they won the first game 86 to nothing. JV, I will say it's hard to get, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is hard to get. You know, I, you know, I, I do something also That's right. for, our, for our gridiron club. I do a scouting report for them, and I'm trying to find depth charts and all that, and it is non-existent. Yeah, that's right. So, but no, I, I watched a little bit of tape today on my lunch break. Uh, you know, Southern, uh, with their new offensive coordinator, new regime, and, and with Coach Dooley, they do a lot of RPO read option stuff. He gets the ball out of his hand quick. He can actually throw the ball deep downfield. He can run as well. Um, the offensive line plays really well. Um, secondary. They do have some lackadaisical moments, but they are some great players. They like to run up and tackle, stick their face in the fan. Um, you know, this is Coach Dooley's second stint. I think he was on staff back in the day when I was in school. Um, you know, so he knows what, what the Southern JAG community expects, and he knows the expectations at university. And like you said, you get an opportunity to play LSU, the first time we've ever had an opportunity to play there. Sure. Um, they're going to be motivated as all get out. Uh, they're going to bring half of Southern <laughs> University to come down That's there. That's correct. There will be so many people outside that stadium. The atmosphere will be electric. Uh, I think it will be a really, really good game for the state. The Jaguar yeah. Nation will be out full force. That's but, no but, doubt about right. it. Jamie, I mean, let me ask you a question about the LSU Tiger and their game. What did you see coming out of the Superdome that you thought was a positive? Because you know, everybody loves to talk about the negatives and the end result. But as a player, as a former coach, what did you see that moving forward is a good thing for us to look look towards? It wasn't any quitting. I mean, they have fight. Obviously, they could have laid down a long time ago. Um, you know, they were up, you know, 10 to 3. Things looked a little bit meek. They 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 uh, had some drop ball opportunities. Um, you know, we wasn't running the ball where, very effectively. It was kind of letting the DBs sit back on their toes and, and make plays on the ball uh, and making those windows for, for Daniels very, very small. Um but I think moving forward, if we can get the run game established, especially this week, you'll get those DBs creeping up, and we'll see what we want to see. Boutte and the rest of those guys, you know, blow the tops off of defense and, and let the band ring up the fight song. Well, I don't believe, I don't believe in, in luck. Uh, you know, laboring under correct knowledge is what you have to do. But it's chance. All right, we lost the player for the year celebrating after another player made a tackle but we just didn't lose any player you know we lost uh, you know an NFL type of player Uh, I feel so bad tell me uh, JV do you remember anybody getting hurt in the first game in the first half no no No, my brain can't even (laughs) fathom that 
Yeah. Especially if you're not getting, you know, blocked or getting cut. Or, you didn't get caught under a pile yeah, or yeah. anything like that. Yeah, I just, mean, but you know what, 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 what was very exciting uh, for me, you know, seeing him, you know, the first few series that he was in, he was pushing the pocket and he was making that, that, yes. that running back and that quarterback make some decisions very quickly. And on the play that he got hurt, he blew the center up, made the running back cut to the right, Guy makes the tackle. He celebrates. I mean, it was just the freakiest let's, thing I've ever seen in my yeah, life. L- let's go with that, uh, folks. And being a good teammate. Yeah. I mean, the guy just, I'm telling you, he blew people up. Uh, he would have played the whole year. And, of course, he's NFL caliber, high draft pick. And I don't even want to go there. And now he's out for the year with uh, one of those knee injuries, you know, ACL. And I, I, I'm so, it's so bad. I'm so sad to see that for anybody, you know. Uh, and uh, other than that, we didn't get hurt too bad, did we? No, no. I, I think we, we walked out of there with your minor nicks and, and, and bruises uh, that you typically mm-hmm. do when you when you play a, a formidable opponent. But you know, but with with his injury, you got some young guys that have an opportunity to step up. And Jacoby and Gearley in the transfer and, and, and Wingo uh, from Missouri. So they'll get more playing, more playing time. Uh, they'll rely on them to push the pocket. Linebackers need to need to fill the holes when they can and, and let that secondary do what they do best. Yeah. JV, do you feel that the quarterback controversy is over? Yeah, I don't think there really is a controversy. I think they're both tremendous athletes. They're great quarterbacks. They both can push the ball down the field. They both can get out of sticky situation with their feet. You know. They just went with the one they were more comfortable with. You know, I think, yeah. you know, Coach Denbrock, you know, called a heck of a game. We just couldn't execute on some plays. Those things will get corrected this week in practice, and we'll see a better a better product this Saturday. But those things do happen. Um, no way I'm going to sit up here and make excuses because at the end of the day, you're, you're trying to win every game that you play in. That's the name of the game. You know, um, to say that, you know, somebody needs to quit or, or, or somebody needs to get fired and all that stuff I think is a lot of BS. Um, but these kids do want to do well. They are trying to put great tape out there to give themselves an opportunity to play ball further after they leave LSU. So nobody's going out there not trying to play well. That is the name of the game is, yeah, is to play. Yeah, that, that, That's uh, silly, you know, for people to think that. I also think what's silly, in my opinion, is blaming a specific coach. You know, by pulling him out, an offensive guy or defensive guy or some name, it's kind of silly. Uh, I think, you know, nobody either win. No coaches don't win or lose like that. Uh, you know, kids win the ball game and kids sometimes don't play well. And with the, even if the coach doesn't do well, they still win. Uh, before Tommy cuts us off, because he's already given me the signal here, let me go back. <laughs> Okay, hey, coach, to, you can keep going. Go right ahead. All right, ahead. <laughs> let me just go back to uh, JV. Uh, you know, I want to try and explain to the people <laughs> that not everybody can get a guy like JV to come on the show and be live here. Uh, he's a good friend of Dan Canavari's, and of course, uh, I respect him so much um, just being here. Now, what he gave you was positive information as much as he possibly could. That shows me he's way, way advanced. I mean, it's so easy to think, oh, you kid, you didn't make the play. Yeah, that's part of this thing. It's a risk as a coach and as a fan when you go root for your team. You know, something bad may happen. It did happen to us. I think we're going to be okay. And uh, JV, you believe that? Okay, and I just wanted to repeat just how good he is for being here. Cano, thanks so much. I know you oh, had yeah, a lot to do with it. We appreciate JV, and he got a lot of insight. You know, the guy played the game yeah, at a high level. a lot of insight. Well, and one thing he knows, he's been there, done that, and what I'm about to say. It's very hard to win a football game. When those guys on the other sideline have scholarships, they have coaches getting paid to win, they had a game plan, they worked right. hard all week, it's, it's, and it's hard to win a football game. Yeah many more times than not in the NFL and in the college level, and we can take it down to high school. But I think what has to come from that is sometimes you got to give the opponent credit. The guy who blocked the extra point, he did a good job for the Seminoles on that play. 
He did what his coaches coached him to do, find a seam, get through, get a hand on a ball. And sometimes fans don't realize that maybe the other team did something extraordinary, did something very well that they were coached up to do. Well said, uh, Skip and I were talking about this. You know, we related to baseball. Their quarterback had the best game of possibly his career thus far. Uh, well, us. he's certainly thus far. I don't think he can do any better, to be yeah, honest. I mean, Boy, was he accurate. He was, he was very accurate, especially on the run. Uh, he did some things, I'll be honest with you, from the tape that I watched last year, I didn't see a lot of what he did today. You know, I mean, not today, but Sunday. It looked like he played out of his body almost. Yeah. I mean, obviously with the yes, hype of the did. game, you know, you're playing, you know, a, a great school with, with a tradition of winning and, and having great players. So you are going to step up your level of play. You are going to do some things that you typically won't do on a normal basis just because of the atmosphere and who your opponent is. But, like I said, hats off to him. You know, sure. what, the, what, what happened was, you know, I think on the field goal block, they made it saw something early on in the game. Hey, well, they, you know what? I think I did see it. You know, I was before I got to that point, moment when they blocked it, before when we kicked an extra point, he almost came through. Yes. You know, so yes. they teach big men to get skinny, stick your hands up, and, <laughs> and pray to God it hit your hand. And guess what? It did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Justin, thanks, thank JP. you so much. You had one more question for him? Go. No. No, thank um, you so much. Just no thanks. thanks. Appreciate the, no the insight and the education and yeah. the – the information you got a good story maybe for us as we roll out of here, oh, or maybe man. Coach Miles or Coach Saban, or a little. St we like <laughs> stories here. <laughs> I kind of blindsided you no, with that. No, Dan. Dan kind of teed me up. I, I know, uh, <laughs> but there, there's a bunch of them that isn't TV rated. But um, there's as maybe, most of them are. Yeah, but <laughs> there's maybe one I could give you. Um, and this is this is towards the end of Coach Miles's career. This is this is pretty funny. Now, mind this, I'm going to preface this because I love the dude and I think he's hilarious, but that's just the type of person he is. He says all the things off the top of his head. We had a recruiting weekend, uh, last game, Texas A&M. Uh, we go eat breakfast at his house that Sunday morning after the game. And if you guys remember, which I do very vividly, that A&M was supposed to be his last game. Like, he thought it was going to be. Oh, Everybody yeah. did. They cheered when he walked out. Uh, he walked out on the field, took his hat off. The crowd went nuts, right? Fast forward, we win the ball game. We go in the locker room. Uh, he comes out, you know, uh, then the presser, you know, he's your head coach, Joe Leva said, moving forward. Well, the next day, we're sitting down and we're eating uh, at his house. And then when we get done, we leave and go back and we talk about the kids who we think we're going to get and who we're not going to get and how the weekend go. And me and Austin Thomas were sitting next to each other. <laughs> and Coach Miles kicks his feet up on the table. He goes, man, the administration has egg on their face. We're going to do what we do moving forward, and that's it. I looked at Austin. I said, man, we got to find a job. <laughs> it's over. It's over because he wasn't going to change. And anybody who knew that knows that, knows that what I'm saying is so true because <laughs> He, many times before, he said he was going to do some things different. He never did. <laughs> so, but yeah, that that that's my coach Miles story, man. He was just one of those yeah. people who were stuck on doing what he did and and didn't care what anybody else thought. And you know, it was good for us for a long time, and then it came to a point where it wasn't good anymore. Yeah. So, that's yeah. it. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. We appreciate it, and uh, keep up the great work over at the Athletic Foundation and all the other things you do. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, we're going to move towards a break. When we come back, it's time for some uh, baseball talk. We're going to talk some baseball when we come back. Got an interesting story for you, something uh, somewhere that Coach Canterbury and Coach Bertman and I uh, spent a couple hours doing last Friday. We're going to tell you all about that when we come back. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube. You're watching Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Looking for the perfect car, but every place he looked, he was ignored. Excuse me. Looking to buy a car? Until one dealership decided to give him a chance. From Jerry Lane Chevrolet comes a story of one man's journey of buying a vehicle and getting treated with honesty and transparency every step of the way. Thank you for listening to me. Helping customers one car at a time. You can count on Jerry Lane. Customer service. Can you truly love something unconditionally? It's easy when it's Sammy's Fried Seafood. So unconditionally delicious. <laughs> Sammy's better than ever.
La Carreta is the place for after work fun, but that's just the beginning of why we've been in South Louisiana for over two decades. Follow your nose to the best Mexican grill and experience fresh ingredients, fun indoor and outdoor dining, and fast and friendly service. Like our Facebook page for event news and live music announcements. Visit CarretaRestaurant.com to find daily specials for your local La Carreta. Fresh, fun, and festive, it's where the fiesta begins. Hello, this is Tommy Christ, and I'd love for you to listen to my podcast, Talking Sports with TK. We're available on all the major platforms wherever you get your podcasts. Talking Sports with TK, a close look at LSU sports, sports across the state of Louisiana, and the national sports topics. We got college football picks, NFL picks. Been doing it for a long time. Scan the QR code, it'll take you right to Talking Sports with TK. And again, wherever you get your podcast, please check out Talking Sports with TK. We'll be glad to have you do it and connect with us on social media. Talking Sports with TK. We continue with Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. really want to thank Justin Vincent for taking time out of his busy schedule to stop by tonight, uh, as Doug Thompson did earlier, uh, here on uh, Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Having fun telling stories. That's what it's all about. Uh, right now, we want to do some talking baseball, brought to you by Blumberg and Associates Insurance. We want to put on the baseball hat. You see Coach Bertman uh, from a few years ago Many with the years. baseball hat, Blumberg and Associates Insurance. That's the young Skip Bertman that showed up from Miami. I remember that guy. Yeah, but I'll tell you, Blumberg was already here. <laughs> he was already <laughs> here. Yeah, but was you got, already you working got the, his thing. I think he raised money to buy that hat. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, how many hats do you have at home? Ooh, I got lots how of many, hats. Uh, let me re- how many LSU well, baseball hats do you have at home? You just, don't keep them after a while. I know, no, but I'm right. just just a few. Just uh, three, four. Yeah, about three or four, probably different kinds, you know, of hats. But LSU, yeah, and you know, because you don't use them very often. Although you saw one of them Friday. What were you doing Friday, Dan? <laughs> what did we do? We're in the pitching lab. We were in the uh, pitching lab with the. Uh, Coach Wes Johnson, it was the first bullpen session in the lab itself right. with Jamie Tutko doing his video work with the track man. We had uh, 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 the, uh, Drew Finley working on the pitching mound. Uh, I, it's, I, I'm trying to think of the exact terminology, but they raise the, they, were, they measure the force yeah. and the hip rotation. They get a lot of, uh, yeah, they get length of the stride, speed of the hip rotation, force of landing. And then you couple that with the track man information and the Ripsodo. There's a lot of numbers flying around there, Skip. A lot of people in there to do it, too. Boy, weren't they? Uh, I, I thought, first of all, you got to realize Wes Johnson's big league pitching coach in really, in a sense. But he also was a college coach in Arkansas and Mississippi State before he went up to the big leagues. I uh, left the Minnesota Twins, and we wanted, you know, to see him. And he was he's just a super gracious, wonderful guy with wonderful children. We met his daughter. And very Anna. humble. Unbelievably humble, okay. And uh, we watched him work, and I'm telling you, <laughs> as a coach that coached pitchers for many years, uh, he's really got some good stuff. Uh, but let's really look at, Tommy, what did you see when you were there regarding technology? Well, it's really amazing all the things they can look at when a guy throws one pitch. Everything from the mound, his stride, his weight transfer, lots of analytics. That's Spin the buzzword. rotation, the rota- vertical. Yeah. That, I mean, I was, like in, I was like in heaven for a couple of hours. I'm looking at both screens. I'm listening. I'm taking it all in. I enjoy I could have sat there. Two more hours. I mean, it was that enjoyable for me to see all of that stuff going on and the interaction between Coach Johnson, Coach Finley, and, and Jamie Tutko and the players. And they, I like the way the coaches were getting a lot from the players. They hadn't been around some of these guys a whole lot. And how you hold that? How you holding that pitch? What, 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 I was just fascinated for a couple of hours. I enjoyed it thoroughly to see that, and, and I think it's a great. Thing that LSU has that other schools have similar yeah, stuff, sure. but I just, I mean, I was, but I could they, have sat there two more hours and right, not right. been bored. I can tell you this, you know, 
I've been to some other schools, saw pitching labs. Mm-hmm. Of course, everybody's got the technology now. But I've got to say that I don't know for sure, but I don't think anyone can use the technology to teach better than what I saw right. with Wes Johnson. I agree with that. I am I don't know. Maybe there's people. But he was excellent. In other words, uh, every time the guy, let's explain to the people, every time a guy pitched a fastball or, or another pitch, whatever the coach wanted, they had to stop, stop and everybody turned to look up to the screen like I'm doing. Okay, and the screen told them how fast the ball was, which is no big deal. Um, and, of course, it shows the rotation. The spin rate. Which is called spin rate of the ball. But most of all, the coach liked the picture of you coming through, and there was your hand, and you could see the ball being released. You know, however, you know, you were supposed to release it. And, of course, the coach really jumped on that. And then he said to Jamie, you know, his video coach, he said, wait, run that back, coach. Also, there was Rick Green's son, uh, Manny. Manny, working for Jamie. I mean, he's already finished college. He's working as an assistant for uh, Jamie. I mean, it's a big job, see, when you use the video. No, I didn't have any of the video, but neither did anybody else, so let's not worry about that stuff. I want to say this. He would say this, the advantage of the video. The guy would set up the pitch with the Rizzotto, and he'd say, see, you got to set that up a little earlier. Or turn, a little it. Yeah, turn it. Turn it earlier. Turn, turn early. It's got to turn earlier. Okay. Or you're led with your chest. Your chest was a little far out in front. So they had all the – they could see all that, but and, – and, Skip, you said this, like Doug said – you said this year, you're way ahead of your time. Kids <laughs> learn with a video. They learn with a screen. They used to learn by listening. That's a big We big grew deal. up listening to the radio, visioning, yep. visioning what went on. These kids see everything. There's highlights and everything Need else. Screens, so man. the idea that they could turn around and see it makes the yeah. learning take that place was, quicker for them. Uh, let, me, let me get this clear for everybody. That was this bullpen type where, you know, he ran through the pitchers quickly. Yeah, 16, 18 pitches yeah. apiece. Okay, you know, he, now this was not always the kind of bullpen that he will coach. You understand? This was the bullpen in the laboratory for the first time for a lot of players. He's only coached them one or two times before. Well, he's teaching yeah. the basics. And then, as you know, Coach, and Tommy, you know this from we're pitching. Doing, He's going to start playing when they get to uh, team practice. They're going to start playing inter squads. So he's going to have guys on different days throwing in the pen a hard pen, a laboratory pen, and then game time. Am I correct? Yeah. It's going to, he's going to do uh, differently, I'm sure, many things. But in any case, uh, Tommy, uh, Dan, I really enjoyed the two hours or so that we spent there uh, with Wes. And all the rest of the people, I enjoyed Drew Finley, uh, you know, one of the, not an assistant coach, he's an undergraduate student, but he really already played seven years of pro ball kind of stuff. His so dad was his uh, uh, executive with the uh, Marlins. Yeah, he, well, he's got plenty of experience, yeah, baseball but he still can only fill the role of an undergraduate coach, and we're fortunate that he's there in that role. Uh, you know, Jay, of course, was while well, this was happening, Jay was working with different hitters, you know, on the field. And it was a lot of fun, and I met a lot of kids and re-met a lot of kids from last year. And I was very impressed on a short basis with a lot of the talent. So there's the size of the kids and a lot of talent. Coach, I was going to say, the other thing that was impressive is uh, they were pretty large, those pitchers. They're pretty big. Like I was, in, I was impressed <laughs> with the size of the kids. Uh, I don't, I don't care about much about how fast they threw, but it was fast enough. Okay, I uh, watched the coach and I saw him move quickly. Um, we're still going to see more bullpens with the coach. Okay, they may be different kinds, but this was the laboratory. Okay, video 
and which I had never seen before in all my career. <laughs> it was exciting. Well, one thing I picked up on, and I thought it was pretty cool, every kid threw 15, 18 pitches, roughly. After every bullpen session, Coach Johnson told the pitcher, go shake your catcher's hand. Oh. Nice you don't throwing, see Tommy. that a lot. That's, nice you know, there's throwing, nothing more Tommy. important than your teammates. And if you're a bullpen, you're throwing a bullpen, you can't do it without a catcher. I, it's it's more than that. But he go sh- he here, said go shake here, his but he's hand. Got, the catcher's got to be involved. Here, in let me pen. let me give you the circle, see, of all the stuff that you want to do. That's one of the things that makes the circle complete. Is that catcher's got to be in full gear, catch the ball correctly, block it. The pitching coach has to go like this when they do it, which of course he did. And then at the end, the the pitcher has to understand how hard it is to do that catching and then th- shake his hand. I think that was great. And there's another thing we saw a lot of. A guy would throw a really good slider, you know, away. And a couple of guys standing watching, good pitch, good pitch, you know, complimenting their teammate. Sure. Or the catcher would block one. Hey, good block back there. I saw a lot of that in what was it, September the 2nd that yeah, we were there, whatever it was. Now, here's it's another so early. Ob- my final observation, you know, Wes Johnson was coaching at the big league club with the Twins, and when he left, there were two and a half games in first place. I don't think they're still there. If you're a pitcher at LSU, certainly you would like to be a professional pitcher, a major league pitcher. That's a goal if you're playing at LSU or in the SEC or almost anywhere. If you're playing at Baton Rouge Community College, sometimes you think you're going to be a professional. And to know that you got a guy that was coaching big leaguers six, seven weeks ago, whenever it was, in the show at that level – why are you not going to listen? You know, I, I'm looking yeah. at it. These and these yeah, players, they're, they're you talk about eye excited. contact. They listen to every word Coach Johnson very said. With that. Even those four or five guys were kind of waiting in the wings yeah. to get their turn. Very, very they were glued in, and I thought I noticed that because you know, Coach, you and I were sitting together, and I, I, I was just taking everything in. Yeah. It was one. You know, it was nice to see. Not surprised that Jay Johnson's a great coach and has wonderful assistants. Josh Jordan was throwing. Batting practice. Josh Simpson is the the new uh, operations operational coach. Now he's an older fellow that worked as a scout and in other professional you know opportunities. I spoke with him today, and he he's a, a great find. Also, very very impressed with all of the coaches. And I think people will see that as the season drags on. Remember, it's September 6th. (laughs) All right. uh, We appreciate everybody out there. Lots of good comments tonight. Uh, We appreciate you interacting with uh, the Hold the Rope show. We certainly do that. And what a fun show tonight, Coach. We had had Doug Thompson, who, as always, was was so very good. I still don't think that glove came down that he threw (laughs) up in the air in Omaha. That's a good point, Tommy. Uh, I still always – Doug's tired of me talking about that. (laughs) But did that glove ever land? I mean, I'm wondering what happened to it. And then, of course, Justin Vincent with the football insight and the knowledge. I mean, it's been been another fun show, Coach. You got any closing comments, Coach? Well, you know, you know, in closing that, you know, we're taking in a lot of information and giving out a lot of information. Uh, my feeling is all this information has really happened or it's correct. Okay, now, if anything is wrong, I'm sorry about that. You know, maybe things have changed and maybe I'm wrong, but I, I think I'm right and I think Tommy's right, I think Dan's right, and I think your guests are right on it. Uh, what about next week? Do we know? Uh, well, we know we got Pete Bush coming, and uh, oh, that's going to be good. We're going to have a former LSU football player. We're just not sure right now who it's going to be, but we're going to have a football guest next week. All right. All right. Anything else from you, Coach Canterbury? I tell you what, I just appreciate the people coming out. I appreciate Justin and Doug and all the people that watch the show. I think it's an exciting time for for us. And good luck to Brian Kelly, folks. If you haven't seen it. You got to go watch halftime and you got to watch the football game this coming Saturday. We also want to thank Lloyd, who did a great job today. He did some production work earlier today with Coach yes, Canterbury. Thanks, some Lloyd. Some production work with me and with Coach all prior to the show. Uh, working hard, getting things together, getting things right. Can't do it without Lloyd. And everybody, 
here on Jordy Collada's staff at FM Digital Media. We appreciate those guys and mostly you fans out there that are watching us and telling everybody about it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. You know your homework assignment. We'll be back next Tuesday with another fun and entertaining show. On behalf of Dan Canterbury and Coach Skip Berman, I'm Tommy Christ saying you have been watching Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Talk to you again. Presented by Jerry Lane Chevrolet, Fine New Roads, and Sammy's Grill on Highland. Join us next Tuesday at 6 p.m.